Greetings YouTubers, it's the big guy, Big Jim, out on a bit of a journey in the old ex-London taxi today. I'm uh, out on a run of about 50 miles round trip, which as we know won't be no effort for the, for the taxi, or fingers crossed it shouldn't. Um, I would have been on the road a little bit sooner, but... Uh, as I came out to the car this morning, lo and behold, a seagull had shipped from the top to the bottom all the way down and literally covered the cab. And uh, it's just not me to drive like that. I just can't, I can't do it. It's not me. So uh, I had to get my cloths out. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny day here, end of May. And I thought I'd make a video. Uh, obviously you've, I would assume if you haven't read it or looked at it, I would look uh, at my previous videos explaining what it's like owning a old ex London cab, cab, sorry, an old ex London taxi that's done many, many miles over the course of 15 plus years, punting its life around London. And now, it's final years are going to be down on the Sussex coast. I'm just passing the sea now. Um, out doing just a couple of miles, a few miles, every, every day, mainly to work and back. And uh, carrying the grandchildren around. Uh, we're booked in for a a prom for my granddaughter um, in a few weeks time as well so we're taking her and her boyfriend off to the prom in Poppy granddaughter named this so hopefully the wind's not too powerful and you can still hear my voice I've got both front windows open at the moment and uh, I'm on my way out it's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning the sun is out and the world is a lovely place. Uh, it's actually all just down here on the coast at the moment. Um, it's going to be a good day. I've got a feeling it's going to be a really, really good day. Sorry if you're being bumped all over the place. It's got nothing to do with a mount. It's got nothing to do with a cab. But what it has got to do with is the state of our the current state of our roads and I suppose if you want me to have a rant this is what I'm going to rant about today um, I've lived down here on the coast for about 16 years now 17 years uh, and all I've seen is more and more vehicles on the road more and more housing developments springing up all over the place uh, that someone's obviously making a heck of a lot of money on. But there's been no real change in the infrastructure. Um, so we've got more vehicles pounding the same old roads that we've always had. And the whole, like that one there, the holes are just getting bigger. Um, and there's no money to repair them. Um, I know that because I work very closely in with West Sussex highways and it is purely down to there is no money in the pot, there's nothing coming in um, nothing but essential repairs are being done um, and those essential repairs they do have a criteria it's got to be over so many centimetres they send out the highways officers and they come out and they roll up they roll over a few times a year roads and uh, they mark them off if they meet a criteria of so many centimeters deep by so many centimeters wide um, it's it truly is not ideal um, I don't no longer drive or drive a motorbike or a push bike 
But, but you've really got to feel sorry for people that drive vehicles with two wheels. Um, because I wouldn't like to go back to biking now. Because everything on this near side now, there's a big hump there, look, so I'll pull out. Everything on the near side now is is a potential hole and I imagine in the wet when there's a puddle, a large puddle up out and you're driving your bike what is that you're driving through? Is it going to be a little puddle or is it a chasm that's just going to block your wheel and uh, send you tumbling over the top it's, it's, it's a dilemma and that's why I never used to have much respect for people on push bikes, but uh, having ridden a push bike recently, um, I'm, I appreciate just how bad they have it with regards to these roads because they are they are awful. And the trouble is, they're getting worse. I mean, from my area and probably your area you get to know where all the potholes are after a while and you find yourself playing a sort of snakes and ladders game avoiding the potholes swerving all over the place basically like a drunk behind the wheel I've just done a couple there which are manholes that have sunken down um, we're coming up to a particularly bad place here this is Rustington going into Angmarin um, and it's it's a particularly bad place uh, we'll have it in a minute and the whole if I don't judge these holes in the road correctly the car's going to be shaking all over the place and yeah it can do damage it can do damage to the suspension you know it can do damage to the parts of the vehicle it can shake me up as well and I do feel it sometimes when I really hit the shakes. But it's the lesser things that, that it damages, like headlight bulbs, tail bulbs, side light bulbs, all these, you know, the heavy vibrations can just blow a bulb completely out. And, you know, you can't blame it on anyone, but you know it shortens the life by the shaking, the constant shaking that goes on. Um... This is the there you will be all over the place down here now, and I'm doing I'm doing 15 mile an hour. Here's a nice big bump coming up. Oh, that's a lovely one, yeah. And th these are all main roads. These are roads where there's a bus in front of me now, you know, punting along. Now, if I was asking for all this to be done for free, another one here, another one here. If I was asking all this to be done for free, then. I'd, I expect to have people turning around and say, well, there's nothing there's nothing like a free lunch, bud. You know, everything needs paying for. Well, you'll know what I'm going to come out with. As a road user here, I'm paying £1.34 at the moment for a, a litre of diesel, heavy diesel as it is on my V5 document another one there um, I'm paying and again I'm paying a lot of money for my diesel where's that money going to because I know a heavy duty on that is because of the road fuel that goes off to the government somewhere um, and they might sort of say well it's not specifically designed for the road use we use it in other areas okay I can understand that so let's let's focus it on to the road fund license then um, road fund license on this vehicle is because it's heavy oil is about 300 pound a year for this and that's just one vehicle where does my money go where is my road fund license going I mean that's the big question you know and that's one vehicle times that by the tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands oh jeez hundreds of thousands that are on the road and money's going somewhere and one place it's not going 
is on the upkeep and the repair of the roads. You know, if this was, you know, if you owned a section of this and it was your driveway, you wouldn't live with this like this. You would, you would relay it, you would do it, because it's your own and you would, you know, well, in theory, we all own the roads and we pay enough for the upkeep of them. And there ain't no upkeep apart from unless there's sinkholes or something really, really deep. And again, and this is just a short ride we've done now, a couple of miles. And you can see I'm being bounced and thrown all over the place. And the speed limit here is 50 miles an hour. So I'm not on no sleepy backwater sea road. I'm actually on a 50 mile an hour road. Now, we're now going off onto another road which is a recently, well, I say recently, over 10 years ago, a bypass road that's been built. And this is, again, a, well, this has just had a resurface. But when I say a resurface, it's, it's just had a top surface. This was particularly bad not long ago. Um, it's now rumbly, there's still stone chippings and rubbish coming off the road. Um, I could go on about this all day and you'll obviously get bored in the ends but you know where do you go from here what, what do you do who do you tell you know there's got to be someone that will eventually listen to what we're, we're saying my pet eight is the roads we pay enough and it's and it is UK because if you go across to France and I'm not talking about going on the toll roads, I'm talking about going on their standard like for like motorways and, and, and B roads. They're amazing. There's no joins in any of the roads. You can take your hands off the wheel. There's no fear of you going down a pothole. It, they're just different. They're just totally different. And all you people that have, jo that have driven continent-wise, you will understand the difference and what worries and concerns me is this is going to get worse if this is like this now every time we go for a winter the road just breaks up even more and in breaking up even more in the end it's going to be they're almost going to be impassable um, especially with modern technology and vehicles now they're not designed to take these sort of poundings all the time. Anyway, I'm going to finish that rant because it's it's a nice sunny day out here and there's better things to do. And as you can see, changing the subject, guys and gals, I'm in the taxi out for a run today. Um, oh yeah, just to give you an update, I have had um, the first newsletter sent in from the uh, London Taxi Association, the uh, vintage LVDT, LVTA, LVTA, London Vintage Taxi Association. Um, it's a nice newsletter, it's got some good bits and pieces in it. There's quite a lot in there as well. Uh, and that arrived on my doorstep a couple of days ago. And to also up, up update my registration on whether or not I own a an ex London cab, which I do, and when I get the chance, I'll send that over, and I'll uh, I will scan that and uh, send it over via an email to them. It looks really good. Um, they have various meets all over the place at various times, sort of show meets where they go to diff different vintage rallies. And although, as I've said before, this old girl's not that old, she'll still get me a free ticket into these places. And once I get the bonnet up, I can then have a look around and see what else is around. Steam rallies and bits and bits and pieces and things like that. So that that'll be uh, that'll be that'll be an interesting thing to uh, uh, to take up, especially with the summer coming up. I'm looking forward to it. Um, So, talking about the cab for just a few minutes before I say goodbye to you, how's she running? She's running really well now. Um, 
everything that's needed to be has been done the engine is running as sweet as anything uh, she really is smooth I suppose I should say touch wood because when you say things like that things go wrong but no she's running really really smooth um, definitely smoother than when I first purchased her and she stops as well and she's got good acceleration now as well if I need it so everything is pretty good in here the only thing I need to do uh, before October is give it a general look around the only thing I haven't checked at the moment is the the level on the diff oil but I've got no wine coming out the diff and I will have a look at that and uh, get some get the old oil checked and uh, fill up the diff if it needs a little bit of oil doesn't take a lot in there but yeah so you're thinking of buying an ex-London cab look into my other videos uh, as I've said before there are pitfalls um, that hopefully you won't jump into uh, and ones to avoid if you look on YouTube at present there are many many TX's I noticed there's a few fairways as well which are obviously the ones that worked before this well before this because then there was the FX's uh, so there's there's quite a few old cabs on there it's worth uh, certainly worth a gander and a look you will find yourself doing many many miles and you'll probably spend a lot of your life as well looking at rubbish um, like I did before I eventually found the one I wanted but I got there in the end um, and I don't regret it one one piece um, it's nothing like the Nissan that I was driving you know the Nissan is a car this is a cab all the comfort in this really is in the back uh, I was sitting in the back the other day and uh, with the feet stretched out and it was really lovely and comfortable you know like sitting in a sitting in an old comfortable armchair it was really really lovely um, so enjoyable and then you come up into the into the the cabin area the driving area and uh, it sort of uh, puts you back to basics but you still have a smile on your face when you driver you know the old steering is still a bit you know movie around me that will be sorted in September but it's uh, it's still a good thing yeah yesterday I was uh, I took a drive over to Whiteways yesterday to meet some friends and while we were over there having a coffee as I pulled in a guy and his wife come up walking over and they almost tried to get in the taxi uh, they thought I was a taxi that had been sent that they'd requested from a local firm and I said I wasn't and they looked at me quite strangely at that point why did I have a taxi if I wasn't a taxi and the trouble is you can spend all your life explaining to people the reasons why I just tell them no now no it's not me it's uh, and then again another little smile I've had people trying the doors, trying to get in, waving me down. That happens fairly often as well. It's not an issue. Um, you've got to expect it. They just look at the shape and they obviously instantly feel that this should be a taxi that picks people up and uh, drops them where they should go. But going back to owning one, I don't regret it in the least yes it has cost me some money to get it back up to to where it is now yes it has but there aren't many vehicles around that will put a smile on my face like this one has I actually look forward this is sad and this is gonna sound quite sad really I look forward to coming out sometimes I don't look forward to coming into work but I look forward to coming out and just jumping in her and getting her to 
little click and off she goes and starts up and off I go and I really look forward to that that little that little sort of quick turnover before it before it chugs itself into action and on off we go on our journey wherever we're going and if you want to reminisce I was talking the other day and I and I was saying if the taxi could talk now I know this is quite far-fetched and you'd say to me oh for God's sake Jim but I wonder what conversations have been had in the rear of the cab I wonder what's been talked about by all the tens of thousands of people that have traveled in this taxi over its hard life in London were there talks over divorce were there heated arguments in the backs of cabs especially this one were there fights was there romance did people meet on the side of the road and decide to share a taxi and it happened to be this one and they're still together after all these years have there been famous people in here have there been doctors here that were on their way to save someone's life what's happened in this taxi over the years of the tens of thousands of people that have actually sat in the rear of this vehicle and spoke to the driver sitting at the front what has been talked about I do think about that sometimes this little hub this little taxi must hold quite a lot of secrets within its metal walls and its drive chain that's its heart that's it, its heart what would it talk about what book would it write what did it know sounds weird doesn't it but I do think about that all these thoughts that are all here all these discussions because you will never ever get so many people when you buy one of these second hand you know you'll only have a few people over the life of a car that you buy or your second hand car but when you buy one of these second hand taxis there would have been Excuse the road noise, there's a lot of cars going by. There'd have been tens of thousands of people that have sat in this. And that's quite comforting to know, really, that he's played its part in whatever. And now it's, or she as I call her, has now arrived onto the south coast. And hopefully, if I'm still around, spend many days and weeks and months and years up here on the south coast um, not doing a tenth of the mileage that a, that this taxi would be doing and some people might say well it's only a lump of metal what are you talking about well it might only be a lump of metal but it is a lump of metal that's done a lot of mileage. Um, it's it's really sort of worked itself. And now she is just running so beautiful, so smooth. The engine, the engine really now. Um, I've got a a good quality oil add, oil oil additive that I put in it, uh, and it's. It's called X something or other, and I've used it for a few years. I was recommend it, and again, it's not snake oil. Um, it's one of those ones that shows you on that test online, the ball bearing test, shows you the wear before and after using it. You just empty a bottle of it in. It's quite expensive. I think it's X90 or something, and I've used it on all my cars, and mechanically they they've always run very very well 
Um, they they always seem to you know keep going. And since I put this in, and with the addition I said in the earlier video of using um, a diesel additive. Red X, a double dose for a while. It's definitely improved the tick over and the running of the engine, and that's I can I can actually I can actually feel that as I'm driving now. It's really weird. When I used to drive the other car, the Nissan, it would shoot along at whatever speed, and you'd sort of you'd be pushing it all the time, 70s, 80s, dare I say. But in the TX, in the taxi, I mean, I'm, I'm doing just over 50 mile an hour now. And it feels like you're doing, there's a police officer going past, actually doing about 120. It feels like you're doing, it feels like you're doing about 70 or 80 mile an hour. So you don't sort of try too hard. It's a real nice feeling. You, you, you know, you, you literally just, bubbling along at 50 now and you do feel like you're going a lot faster and everything doesn't seem sort of the need for speed and that makes me smile that makes me smile a lot well I'm up to 60 now there's never been such days well that was just basically a ramble about, well, about my feelings and thoughts at the moment. Um, I'll put this up, obviously, and you'll be looking at this later. If you'd like to leave your comments down below and let me know what you feel, hopefully you can hear me over the road noise. Um, uh, I will get more sort of, more videos up of my time. I'll have a, I'll have a few, front facing videos as well when I'm doing some interesting runs around but take the plunge if you're if you're if you really want an old cab don't hold back because they will be going up in price when you get less of them on the road get yourself one put a smile on your face like it does me you won't regret it just be very cautious about what you purchase. And remember that there are some old ones out there, some old dogs that uh, really are just donor vehicles, should be used for spares and repairs. And that's another thing, I wish I had space in my current life for another taxi not to drive but as a donor and I'd be taking all those panels off that are bolt off the alternators steering pumps injectors TX1, TX2 bits and pieces oh, I would definitely install them probably never use them but it's nice to know they're there Anyway, hope I haven't bored you to death on my rant and chat today. If you've got any comments or you want me to upload something or talk about something else, hopefully regards my ownership of the taxi, um, please do. We're in, we're in our embryonic stage at the moment. Uh, we're growing very, very slowly but it's something that I enjoy doing and it'll be nice to hear some of your comments below. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, from the big fella driving his London Taxi International TX2 on a 2003 plate with 260 plus thousand miles under the bonnet and still going, we will no doubt catch up again. Keep safe, keep driving, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Thanks, everyone. Bye to you. Bye.